guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And tonight we're gonna make some keto comfort food. I'm gonna make some brownies. I think they're gonna be perfect. It's a rainy day, we're stuck at home. Let's make something fun and yummy and won't kill me because <laughs> I got the diabetes. Um, I can't give you the exact recipe because this is out of a cookbook called Keto Gatherings. But if you look on Pinterest, there's tons of brownie recipes. This is just one. Um, but I will go over some of the ingredients that are in here. So Keto Gatherings by Dr. Christy Sullivan or Christy H. Sullivan, PhD. I love this book. It has some great recipes in it. So what I'm going to do is flip you around. We're going to mix up the batter and then we're going to get it in the oven. Here we go. Now, first things first, in here I have almond flour, oat fiber. That is not oat flour, it's oat fiber, which is zero carbs, and cocoa powder. This is our dry ingredients. We're going to put that in there. So it's got to get mixed together. And then I have salt, cinnamon, and co uh, instant coffee. Anytime you use um, chocolate, instant coffee is fabulous. And then you just mix this all together with a whisk, um, just so it's combined evenly, because that's important, right? Combining all of our ingredients together. Now, in this bowl, I have some cream cheese and butter that has been brought to room temperature, softened. So we are gonna whip that up. Look at my little tiny spatula. I love it. Um, I'm gonna whip this up real quick. That has been creamed together. In here, I have heavy cream, eggs, vanilla, and sour cream. And they're gonna go up in here and get whipped in. Yeah, the recipe says whip your eggs and sugar and everything together. Oh, I forgot the sugar. I probably should have put the sugar in. Oops. With the stuff, but that's okay. And a cup of uh, keto approved sweetener. For now the next step is our dry ingredients. In here. Along with melted... Now the recipe calls for 90% dark chocolate. I didn't have that, but I have Baker's chocolate and I'm okay with that for me. So I added three ounces and you gotta melt it of dark chocolate of some sort. If you're, whoa. If you're staying keto, you want it 90% or higher or like Lily's chocolate which is pre-sweetened. This is Baker's chocolate. It has zero sweetness. It's 100% chocolate. And you want to get all of that in there. Uh, but like I said, you can use whatever chocolate works for you. Then we're going to mix it all together. Okay. Now, almond flour does not absorb liquids. It's just ground up almonds. But oat fiber does. So that's how we're getting this thickness. Oat fiber actually absorbs a lot of liquid. They call it a thirsty grain. Um, because it drinks up a lot. Same thing with coconut flour. And you can substitute coconut flour in this recipe. It's just a different amount. So now we're gonna get everybody in the pool and I'm gonna do one kind of maybe little, I don't know. I was thinking about putting some peanut butter on top, guys. Oh, like, doesn't that just sound like the perfect, I'm stuck in the house, COVID keto approved treat? I mean, it does to me. See how thick this is? And I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes and honestly, it's just gonna get thicker until it's absorbed all of the liquid right so let me clean up this mess and then i think what i will do is just put a little peanut butter on top because i love peanut butter and chocolate so i'll be right back all right i have some pretty 
runny peanut butter that we're going to use on this. And then we're going to use a knife to kind of smush it in. Smush, that's another technical term. I don't know if you guys know that one or not. I'm not going to use a lot of peanut butter, maybe two tablespoons, because it is kind of carb heavy. But please, come on. If we're going to make brownies, I feel like we need to add peanut butter. Because peanut butter and chocolate. I mean, right? I'm in Ohio. We are the Buckeye State. It's like a national food or a law or something that I have to have it like this. Yeah, I won't be buying this peanut butter again. Look how runny it is. It, I mean, it's fine. It tastes good. It's just rough. And then it's super thick at the bottom. I even tried stirring it. Just makes a mess. All right. Now, these are going to end up, I'll make a couple servings for me and then the rest will end up in the freezer because we can't be having this much uh, brownie sitting on my counter, right? Because I will just eat it up. But if I put it in the freezer in portion sizes, that's perfect. Okay. So then we're going to take our little knife here, just like you would if you had regular brownies, and you just kind of... Run your knife through it. The goal is to try to kind of get it buried a little bit, right? And then we're gonna go this way. Guys, look how pretty that looks. Let's get you down in there. This thing with these brownies is it, it they don't like um, puff up. Now they're going in the oven for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. That's what this recipe calls for. And I will show you when they're done. Oh, so good. Okay, here they are. Now the recipe says day one, they're light and fluffy, true statement. And tomorrow they will become like dense, like a brownie, but let's try it. It's a little warm still. Mm. I like the texture. It's creamy and light. Next time I'll use a little more sweetener. Since I use 100% chocolate, it needs a little more sweetener. But it's okay. I mean, I'm going to eat this pan. Don't you worry. Mm. That was delicious. Cheeto peanut butter brownie. All right, guys, you have a good one, and I hope you enjoyed. Talk to you later.